Hi everyone, welcome to Reaching for the Moon. It's been a really exciting time for space ex exploration followers this week. Two space agencies recently launched their own independent missions with the goal of landing their spacecraft on the lunar surface. The Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, launched the Chandran-3 spacecraft on July 4th, 2023 for its journey to the moon. Soon thereafter, the Russian State Space Corporation, Roscosmos, launched its Lunar 25 spacecraft on August of 2023 for its journey to the moon. A few years ago, Chandrayaan-2 was launched on July of 2019 and reached its lunar orbit in August of that year. However, the lander crashed onto the moon's surface when it was attempting to land on the near side of the moon in the south polar region. According to a failure analysis report submitted by ISRO, the crash was caused by a software glitch. The Chandrayaan-3 launch is the first launch attempt by ISRO to land on the moon since the crash of Chandrayaan-2. Chandrayaan-3 and Chandrayaan-2 both took much longer to reach the moon than it did for our Apollo missions which arrived at the moon only a few days after launch. The reason is that India uses much less powerful rockets to launch their spacecraft than the Saturn V used by NASA to launch its spacecraft. Therefore, the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft has to orbit the Earth several times in order to gain sufficient speed before embarking on its month-long journey to the moon. The lander Vikram, which means Valor in Sanskrit, detached from its propulsion module, began sending images of the moon's surface since entering the lunar orbit on August 5th. And it became the fourth nation to land safely on the moon's surface and the first nation to land a spacecraft near the moon's south pole on August 23rd, 2023. The Moon's South Pole area is of particular interest because it's believed to have regions of the Moon that are in near total darkness. That means that the water ice could possibly accumulate due to the extremely low temperatures. Hopefully, we'll know if Vikram found any ice and water. The Luna 25 spacecraft is part of the Roscosmos Luna Glob program. Russian space agency Roscosmos has not launched a spacecraft since 1976, which was targeted to land on the surface of the moon. The primary goal of the Luna 25 mission was to study the lunar surface, analyze the composition of the regolith, which is the soil, and search for potential resources like water ice in the permanently shadowed craters near the lunar south pole. Unfortunately, Roscomos reported that the Luna 25 spacecraft did not successfully land, but has crashed on the lunar surface while attempting to land. The lander was designed to operate on the lunar surface, studying surface regolith and exopheric dust and particles for a minimum of one year. Here's a short video of the launch of the Luna 25. Russia's first moon mission in 47 years has failed. The Luna 25 spacecraft spun out of control and crashed into the moon after a problem preparing for pre-landing orbit. Russia's state space corporation, Roscosmos, said it had lost contact with the craft at 11.57 GMT on Saturday. In a statement, it said, quote, The apparatus moved into an unpredictable orbit and ceased to exist as a result of a collision with the surface of the moon. It added that a special interdepartmental commission had been formed to investigate the reasons behind the loss of Luna 25. The mission had raised hopes in Moscow that Russia was returning to the big power moon race. But this failure has underscored the decline of Russia's space power since the glory days of Cold War competition. Moscow had been the first to launch a satellite to orbit the Earth in 1957, and Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first man to travel into space in 1961. 
Russia had not attempted a moon mission since Luna 24 in 1976. It's been racing against India, whose spacecraft is scheduled to land on the moon's south pole this week. It also faces competition from China and the United States, which both have advanced lunar ambitions. Luna 25's failure means that Russia may not be the first to sample the frozen water which scientists believe the south pole of the moon holds. It was not immediately clear what long-term impact the failed mission would have on the country's moon program. The crash comes as Russia's $2 trillion economy faces its biggest external challenge for decades. The pressure of both Western sanctions and fighting the most significant land war in Europe since World War II. In addition to the missions already completed this year, Intuitive Machines has scheduled its unmanned IM-1 mission to land on the moon in November of 2023. And Artemis II is scheduled for its launch in the spring of 2024, it will be a manned flight, but will not land on the moon's surface, only circle the moon. This is certainly an exciting time for moon missions. We're going to follow these missions closely and keep you informed of their progress. With that thought, I'm going to end today's video. If you liked the video, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button to receive an email every time Reaching for the Moon posts a new video. Thank you for watching. And remember always, failure is not an option. Bye.